I like to begin this course with a discussion of terminology, specifically thinking about the words that we use to refer to students who are learning English as a new language at school. Throughout mo most of the 20th century, the term that was commonly used to refer to this group of students was limited English proficient, or LEP, a term that you can identify pretty immediately as being deficit oriented, focusing on what a student lacked, that they were limited English proficient, and viewing that as a problem that needed to be remediated by schools. Into the 21st century, we've begun to use more asset-oriented terms, uh, more at least more neutral terms. Um, the term that's commonly used now is English learner, which the federal government defines as any school-age student who is still developing the English language proficiency needed to engage in grade-level content learning. Now, while English learner is certainly a, a step forward, and uh, I think a superior term to LEP, uh, I would argue that there are much more asset-oriented ways we can be talking about our students, uh, because English learner still focuses on students' English abilities, rather than seeing the students holistically for all of the linguistic resources that they know and bring into our classrooms. A term that I like to use um, is a, a term that was introduced by Ophelia Garcia in 2009, the word emergent bilingual. Um, emergent bilingual recognizes that students are still in the process of developing their language abilities in English, um, but sees students more holistically as bilinguals, recognizing that they come into our classroom with other language resources, knowing and speaking other languages, and that by adding English to their repertoire, they are thus becoming bilingual. Um, Ramon Antonio Martinez um, expands this a bit further um, and uses the term emergent by slash multilingual to recognize that students may be learning English as their third or fourth language. Uh, the state of Rhode Island uses the word uh, multilingual learner, MLL, um, as many of you know, um, which is also a more asset-oriented way to talk about our, our students who are learning English at school. Again, recognizing that they, they know other languages and they're in the process of learning English, which makes them a multilingual learner. Um, I moved here from the state of Colorado, which uses the term CLD, culturally and linguistically diverse student, to also acknowledge that these students are not just linguistically diverse, but also culturally diverse. And so what I'd like to encourage you to do in this course is to think carefully about the words that we're using when we talk about our students who are learning English as a new language, uh, because these are not just terms um, that are neutral, um, but they really do reflect our beliefs about who our students are and what their capabilities are. Um, and so I encourage you to choose more inclusive language when you're writing about um, about about uh, your own students or about um, this group of students in general, um, whether it's EBs or MLLs, CLD students, or whatever term you feel best describes uh, who your students are, uh, and that we keep in mind um, that the language we use does have an impact um, on our own way of understanding our students and how others understand who our students are. So as you move into the, the reading and the viewing for this week, uh, you'll see that uh, Ramon Antonio Martinez um, we'll continue to push us to think about the labels we're using and how to have more asset-based language. Um, and in the TED Talk, you'll think about um, the single story that we have when we use more narrow ways of thinking about our students um, and how to develop a, a more expansive um, and holistic way of, of seeing our students.